I am Nomvula Rakolote, the Registrar for the South African Council for Project and Construction Management Professions, abbreviated as SACPCMP. Uh, in terms of um, a brief overview about Council, I'll start with a definition of the built environment. Built environment refers to the functional area in which registered persons practice. And then the built environment includes all structures that are planned and or erected above or underground, as well as the land utilized for the purpose of supporting infrastructure. Now, in terms of the council itself, we are operating alongside other councils within the built environment. First of all, we report to the Council of the Built Environment, named as the CBE. And alongside, we have the South African Council for Quantity Surveying Profession. We have the South African Council for Architectural Professions. And then we have the Engineering Council of South Africa. And then we have the South African Council for Property Valuers Professions. The four councils I've just mentioned were there prior 1994. However, they were just re-enacted in 2000. Now coming to the two remaining councils, which was, is the South African Council for the Landscape Architect Profession and the SACPCMP. These were two newly established councils. Now the difference between this council is that with the SACPCMP, all the other professions regulate a profession, although they'll be having different categories of registration. However, the SACPCMP regulates more than one profession. You will note that the name of the council ends with professions. The SACPCMP is a statutory body, and it was established in terms of, the, of Section 2 of the Project and Construction Management Act 2000, which is Act Number 48 of 2000, and is downloadable from our website. Council is made up of 10 members. Six are from the Project and Construction Management Fraternity, meaning they are registered with council and are practiced as professions. Two are from government that are directly appointed by the Minister of Public Works, and two are public representatives. All these ten members are directly appointed by the minister. And the current council started in 2009, October. However, SACPCMP SACPC itself started its operation in 2002. Um, in terms of the growth of council since 2002, um, the actual registration started in 2003, and what you are seeing is an overall registration statistics showing the growth of council from 2003 up until 2010, of which for this financial year, I'll, I'll later brief you on those days. So there has been significant growth in the registered persons. Now in terms of the vision, the vision of the SACPCMP is to develop and demonstrate world-class performance in the construction project management and construction management profession. A brief overview on, with regard to our mission is to ensure professionalism in construction project management and construction management practice by creating an enabling environment that will encourage and facilitate, first of all, access to all who are prepared to gain the necessary skill. And I will just elaborate on how we ensure that, because that is through program accreditation. Ensuring world-class education, formation of partnership with others with similar mandates and ideals. As I've said, we operate alongside other built environment councils. Promoting research and development to improve practices, procedures, and stakeholder satisfaction. This is done by way of reviewing our policies, of making sure that we have policies that respond to the needs. Monitoring integrity, honesty, and sustainable, and, as, and sustainable practices. And then now in terms of the values of the council, we have six. The one is to ensure accountability, commitment to promoting the profession, transparency at all costs, hence we have all our policies on the website and from time to time we do stakeholder engagement. Honesty, inclusiveness at all time, we strive for that and also sustainable practice. 
Now I'm going to take you through the categories of registration of council and later on we'll be able to say what is the criteria for registering under each. This is also in our act. We have the professional construction manager, professional construction project manager. Those are the professional categories. Professional construction manager, abbreviated as PRCM, meaning that's the abbreviation you use once registered. Professional construction project manager, abbreviated as PRCPM. And then we have the professional construction mentor. Those are our three professional categories. Then we have candidates. We have a candidate construction manager who needs to work directly under supervision of a professional construction manager before an upgrade. And we will go into the criteria later on. And then we have a candidate construction project manager. And then the council is also empowered by the act to establish any other specified categories prescribed by the council. Currently now we have finalized the construction mentor and this will be open for registration by the 1st of July 2012. The policy was gazetted for comments and will be gazetted for, for, for implementation. There were roadshows that had happened in all nine provinces regarding this category. And then currently there's work in progress with regard to the construction health and safety practitioners that has got different categories. Now going to the main categories of registration of council. I would want to differentiate between the construction project manager and the construction manager. The construction project manager as defined in our act and also in the scope of services is the management of projects within the built environment from conception to completion, including the management of related professional services. So the construction project manager, PRCPM registered with council, is the one point of responsibility in this regard. Then the definition of a construction manager, how does it differ from a project construction manager? The construction management has got to do with the management of the physical construction process within the built environment, and it includes the coordination, administration, and management of resources. The construction manager is the one point of responsibility in this regard. Those are the categories. Now coming to the legislative mandate of council, what does the act empower us to do? The council is empowered by the Act 48 of 2000, as I said, is downloadable from our website. First of all is to keep a national register. We keep a national register of registered professionals and candidates in construction management and construction project management or any category prescribed by council. We determine fees and charges payable in respect of application, registration, renewal, examination, appeal, education, and any other fees it considers necessary. And this is gazetted on an annual basis and revised on an annual basis. It's also obtainable from our website. We consult and identify the type of project and construction work which may be performed by registered persons. Thus, we call the scope of services for the categories. We conduct accreditation visits to all institutions of higher learning that offer construction management and construction project management. And I must at this point say this will be the first year that council will be conducting accreditation visits for the purpose of accrediting programs within the project and construction management professions, which is quite a highlight because this is a third term, uh, a third term council of the SACPCMP and it will be for the first time. However, in 2008, we did conduct accreditation visits, but only as observers with the CIOP, which is the, the Chartered Institute of Building. There, it was just a learning um, curve for the council. And then we need to consult with the Council of Higher Education regarding matters relevant to education in project and construction management. Now, also with the formation of the Department of Higher Education, that will be included, although it was not in the Act. We know that it's a department that was established in this current uh, era. And then we consult with the South African Qualifications Authority or any body established by it and voluntary association to determine competency standards for the purpose of registration. And I must say at this point, Council has got 10 registered voluntary associations. And then we need to enter into an agreement with any person or body within or outside the Republic with regard to the recognition of any examination or qualification 
for the purpose of registration. Currently, we do have a memorandum of agreement. That is a draft that we will be finalizing with the CIOB, Chartered Institute of Building, because it's one of our voluntary associations. However, it's an international body. And we also do have people that are practicing outside. We have started negotiations with the RICS, with RICS, also an international body, where we will see what the areas of collaborations would be. And I must also say, although this is what council does, because we are a statutory body of public works, if public works undertakes any international uh, um, trip fact-finding missions, they do invite all the built environment councils. Like we did go for a fact-finding mission in Uganda last year, where we had um, a aid memo, what you called is a, is a memorandum of agreement with regard to the areas of collaboration that is work in progress. And the Department of Public Works is currently looking at Zambia. So we will be participating in all of those other programs for international agreements. So it's not only within council, but it will also depend what the CBE is doing and what the Department of Public Works is doing. And then we conduct any examination for the purpose of registration and examinations are only conducted twice per year, which is in April and it's set in September. And this is determined by the outcomes of your assessment. Also, council is empowered through its legislation to determine the recognition criteria for voluntary association. As I've said, we've got 10 voluntary association and the overall criteria is just to ensure that they have at least 50 members members because they are voluntary associations that are registered persons with the SACPCMP. So that is the difference between a council, which is a statutory body, and a voluntary association. And also we determine in consultation with voluntary association conditions relating to and the nature and the extent of continuing education and training. And I must mention at this time that our voluntary associations have been very instrumental and also that is one of the highlights of council this year. For the first time, we will be implementing the continuing professional development, the CPD policy, meaning now all registered persons are able to start to account for their CPD activities. And this was with the help of all our voluntary associations where we look at courses that they've already validated. These were approved for council and immediately will count for CPD points. So that was just to make sure that we don't reinvent the wheel. And then the last two is that we investigate and charge improper conduct by a registered persons. There is a committee of council established to do specifically that. And there's also continuous work that is happening there. And then lastly is to take any measures council considers necessary for the proper performance and exercise of its function, duties or powers to achieve the objectives of the act. That ends our legislative mandate. Before I outline the criteria that is required to become registered in the different registration categories of cancer, by way of a brief, brief background, I can indicate that the registration policy came into being or was implemented from the 1st of May 2009. Council has since deemed it necessary to undertake a holistic review of the policy. And once this is completed, this will be published in the Gazette for comments before this is actually implemented. Now, the requirements for registration for both professional construction manager and professional construction project manager are, one, an accredited honors degree in the build environment field of study with a minimum of four years of post-qualification experience, two, an accredited Bachelor of Technology qualification in the Build Environment of Study with a minimum of five years of post-qualification relevant experience, three, an accredited National Higher Diploma in the Build Environment field of study with a minimum of six years of post-qualification relevant practical experience, and four, an accredited National Diploma in the Build Environment field of study with a minimum of seven years post-qualification relevant experience. I want to underline the word post-qualification relevant experience, that it will mean the experience you have gained either as a construction project manager or as a construction manager. The second one relates to uh, the candidate construction manager and candidate 
a construction a project manager. The requirements are the same for both, and these are an accredited honors degree in the build environment field of study. For this one, you will not require to have any relevant practical experience. You can enter straight away as a candidate. Two, an accredited BTEC qualification in the build environment field of study with a minimum of one year post qualification relevant practical experience. Three, an accredited national higher diploma in the build environment field of study with a minimum of two years relevant post qualification experience. Four, an accredited national diploma in the build environment field of study with a minimum of three years post qualification relevant experience. I wish to emphasize that except with an honors degree in the build environment, for all other qualifications that are recognized for registration as a candidate, you'll require to have relevant practical experience in the particular category you wish to apply for. Now I want to take you through the application process, which is a very simple process that you can register online by going to our website, which is www.sacpcmp.org.za. You can then click, go to the home page and click on register online. And then on the home page, click register and follow the instructions. If you are experiencing any difficulties, you are at liberty to contact us and can contact us by email on uh, admin at sacpcmp.org.za. The stages of assessment are in-house we carry out an internal preliminary assessment and this takes us approximately three days. Then there is an assessment by a panel of three assessors who do this independent from each other. Then one would proceed to a professional interview, which will be approximately one month after attaining minimum score from assessment. I wish to highlight something what could happen through the assessment of the application and at the professional interview. The assessors may, may come to the conclusion that one is more suited to another category rather than the category that he has applied for. And in such cases, the person will be issued with a letter telling him of the outcome and that uh, he is being reclassified. This is not forced on the person, but it will be a recommendation for that person to say, yes, he accepts that or he would need this to be reviewed. Then if you satisfy all, all requirements and you will need to satisfy all requirements and pay all applicable fees for you now to be registered by the council, your name will then be entered into the database of council your certificate of registration will then be posted to you, which, we, which will normally go with the letter under the signature of the registrar, requesting you to display it in a significant position within your office or within your organization. Then you will be required to engage in CPD activities with the council. CPD has come, has, has come into being from the beginning of this financial year, and it will be a requirement for renewal of registration. The other routes to registrations are, if you don't have an, an if, you, if you are in possession of a non-accredited qualification with or without experience, you may be required to undergo a test of professional competency or an examination. The other routes are that of the academic route, which pertains to those in the teaching environment, in, in the teaching of accredited courses and accredited courses means courses that are accredited by the SAC PCMP. And the requirements, are, the re, these are for people who are carrying out research activities that are relevant to the construction environment with four years uh, relevant practical experience. The requirements are as follows, an application in a prescribed form, certified copy of the identity document, certified copy of relevant qualifications and professional registrations, a detailed curriculum vitae, and I may point out that Council has, has designed a standard template to ensure that there is uniformity in the submissions of the curriculum vitae, and more importantly that what is contained within the curriculum vitae is what the re Council requires to be within it. 
Then there is a requirement for a 3,000 word report that documents the relevance of the research to the construction and pro project management profession and how this has been applied. Then there is a requirement for a submission of a peer-reviewed research papers and the requirement is that at least one must be published in a journal, be it locally or be it externally. The other route to registration is that of recognition of prior learning, which is abbreviated as RPL. And this one is for, for provision for applicants who do not have the relevant formal qualifications as recognized by council, but have some substantial knowledge and experience in either the field of construction project management and construction management. These applicants are allowed to go through the program of recognition of prior learning and the program is designed to assess the amount of knowledge these individuals possess and credit them for their knowledge base. A decision will then be taken on which route they are to follow to obtain the necessary requirements for registration in an appropriate category. I also wish to emphasize that for registration in the professional categories within council, just to give a, a summation of that is that you undergo a two-stage process. The two-stage process pertains to the assessment of your application. And if you are deemed as meeting the requirements, you then proceed to a professional interview. So it's a two-stage process for you to be eventually registered by council. In terms of the appeals process of council, any individual aggrieved by council decision has recourse to an appeal. The procedures for lodging the appeals are in the appeals policy and procedures which are available within our website. The requirement is that you should lodge the appeal within 30 days of becoming aware of the council decision and that the appeals committee is obliged to dispose of the appeal within 60 working days. I also wish to qualify the 60 working days to say 60 working days does not exclude weekends or public holidays and that the appeals are only considered upon payment of the appeal fee which for this current year is a 912 rand. The, the approved fees for the 2012-2013 financial year are for one professional. The annual fee is 2,280 rand. The application fee is 912 rand. The registration fee is 319 rand 20 cents. The examination fee will be 1,185 rand 60 cents per module. The interview fee is 1,710 rand. The exam workshop is 946 rand 20 cents. The recognition of prior learning fee is 15,040 rand. Second, for candidates, the annual fee is 1,770 rand. The registration fee is 319 rand 20 cents. You have the right to appeal and the appeal fee is uniform, is 912 rand. Now, just a breakdown of our statistics um, currently. The um, overall number of registered persons that we have is 3,136. I must, however, point out here, we only indicate active, meaning their annual fees are paid and up to date. However, we do have other categories. We do have members, uh, registered persons that are suspended. We have those that have been deregistered, and deregistration is due to various reasons. However, the council has passed a resolution in June 2009 to say that if you are a retired person, you get a discount of 30% from your annual registration fee. However, there are conditions related to that and that you can find on the council's website under council resolutions. And then if you are practicing overseas, let me say you have left the country for a certain period and you are still interested in maintaining your registration status, then for that you get a 20% discount. Now, even when you refer to our annual report, you will see that we do recognize those people 
as active registered persons. And in our annual report, they are classified under foreign. However, in the annual report, there is a breakdown of the countries where they are practicing. First of all, for the PRCPM, which is a project construction project manager, the total of registered persons is 1,584 and is continually growing. The professional construction manager is sitting at 750 and is continually growing. However, council has a concern because it's not really reflecting what is happening out in practice. As a result, council has taken a proactive step to organize a summit which we call where have all the construction managers go. We are doing it with a whole lot of stakeholders and I must say another big achievement for council is that the construction manager, the professional construction manager is recognized in the new construction regulations by the Department of Labor where they have adopted the definition of construction manager as is from the SACPCMP, meaning that there will be some growth there. The, cons the candidate construction manager, we have 181. We will again run a video on how to upgrade step by step on how to upgrade from candidature status to professional status, which has been a challenge not only for this council but for all the councils within the built environment. And then our newly established category, I'm saying newly because it was just established now in 2008, the professional construction mentor we have 13 registered persons and we do have another specified category. And I think you will note that the professional construction mentor is not mentioned in the act, but our legislation does empower us to look at, at any other specified categories. Because remember, the environment is changing, so we need to respond to the needs equally. Now, just going to the overall registration per province, you will see it reflects where infrastructure happens the most. Um, the Eastern Cape has got 310 registered persons. Four rain is about 35 in all different countries. The Free State is 109. Gauteng, Gauteng province tops at all is 1,340. KwaZulu Natal is four, 496. Western Cape is 514. And then you are left with the other provinces being Limpopo, 116. Mpumalanga, 125. Northwest, 45. And Northern Cape, 46. Those statistics that I've just given refers to the categories across. The top three provinces are um, Gauteng, followed by the Western Cape, followed by KZN and then free state. And as I usually say, all the other registered persons have all moved to Gauteng. So if we could do an analysis of where they come from originally, I think our stats will look differently. And then we go to the total registration per racial group. Um, in terms of black, we've got black registered persons across all categories. We've got 743. Colored, we've got 108. Indian, we've got 143. And white, we've got two, 2,142. This is across all genders. For males, we are having 2,949. And then females, we have 187. So the breakdown of the statistics that I have given now is uh, the reporting template as required by the CBE and subsequently the Department of Public Works. And also another concern is that our registrations per age, we note that most of our registration is between the ages of 40 to 55. And then from youth, from 21 upwards up until that age of 45, there's not much. And also going down, most of the registered persons you'll find are on a decline, meaning they are on the retirement stage. We started the student chapter category in 2010 and it was officially launched by the then Minister, Minister Deutsch of Public Works. But the intention of creating the student chapter, first of all, is to ensure that we do encouragement for the students whilst they are still studying. But not only for those purposes, but to expose them to the profession. Now we are also encouraging the retired persons and our registered persons to actually mentor and adopt students whilst they are at university. 
what we have done now to encourage the youth with our registered uh, um, with our students that have registered in the student chapter category what we would usually do is that if we have for instance conferences we would say if you register maybe five people from your company you can then take a student for free i must however mention at this point that if registered persons do mentor students from the student chapter categories that are registered with council they are able now to even get um, cpd points and we are also going to create an enabling environment as council because now with our new website we are creating a student portal where registered persons can directly interact with um, with students we give them exposure and we give them the necessary links so that they must be able to know where they are going from here i want to give you an insight into the benefits of registration and this benefits of registration may apply to the employer the client, the individual himself, and the, the public as, at large. In terms of registration, the benefit that would accrue is that you'll be registered in a register that is a public document and which is available to both public and private bodies. There is also the benefit of recognition that being listed in the register signifies that you are properly qualified as a practicing professional in accordance with the prevailing legislation that your competency is independently attested to with your credentials having been duly verified and accepted by an impartial statutory body that you will also have an obligation to commit yourself to professionalism which is being underwritten by the support of a statutory body hence your credentials will be respected both locally and in other parts of the world I must at this point um, say that this was just an overview about what the SACPCMB is all about. However, I also want to point out at this stage the um, initiatives that Council has undertaken since, um, since the beginning and how Council has improved and grown from strength to strength. Initiatives amongst others is what I have already mentioned being the student chapter which we are encouraging all registered persons to help council to make sure this becomes a reality and it becomes practically implementable. We will be counting on the support of the registered persons. And I must also say council intends even to recognize companies that will assist in making sure that the student chapter category grows. We are even looking at the stage preliminary talks, however, at having companies register as friends of the council. And then other initiatives for registered persons, for those that are already registered with council, is our very fresh and highly professional, I'm using the words of the people that have rated the website, of the new redesigned website, which is user-friendly, which also allows for online application, online assessments, which will enable council to expedite the assessment process. Usually we do get feedback from our relevant stakeholders. One of the things was across all built environment councils is that the assessment process takes too long. Now what council has done additional to the website that has been redesigned to ensure that you can even apply online was to do a call for assessors. Every application goes to at least three assessors of which if there's any disagreements, it goes to the moderators. So that pool of assessors has been increased and there has been an induction workshop. And we are again this year going to have another induction workshop in July to ensure that we are able to cater for the other specified categories. Another brand new initiative that Council is very proud about is um, the online CPD management. This is done by the SACPCMP together with CPD on demand. Here we want to make sure that we just take away the sting of CPD. We make it much more easier for you. You are able to manage all your CPD points online. The CPD has become effective 1st of April 2012. Because of the registered persons, the newsletter has grown from strength to strength through the submission of their articles, supporting the newsletter even by adverts. This has ensured that the newsletter becomes self-sustainable.
We are consulting the clients to make them aware of the categories of registration and then what is the difference between these. We've also started with various stakeholder engagement programs for our construction mentor, even for our construction health and safety. However, we've also experienced an increase in companies where they would want a person to come from council to take them through the registration process. And if there's any need, you are welcome to contact the council if you have such need for your company, where we will take you through the process. But I must point out, what we do at companies is just to explain the processes. We do not do on-site assessment of applications, nor approval, because all of that is subjected to council's processes. And council is also intending for the first time to host its um, annual SACPCMP uh, conference that's going to look at growth, development, and transformation within the project and construction management profession. And that will involve a whole lot of stakeholders. And for that, you need to watch the space, being the website, being the newsletter, and all other forms of awareness. In closing off, I would really like to thank you for the time given to listen to the overview about the SACPCMP. And I just want to encourage you to say, watch the space, watch all the other subsequent videos that are going to follow that you will be able to access from our website. And lastly, I want to close off by saying that as the council, we are committed to improve on service delivery to those that we exist to serve and the public at large.